yeah, basically before before my deal and before I really had an outlet to get my music out, I was just full time hustling and part time rapping. Like I, I always had a passion for for rap music, and I was always trying to create the situation to where I could I could I could do this full time. got money on the street for a while. I wasn't making a million dollars in the street. I ain't gonna tell that lie. We got hundreds of thousands in the street though, me and my brother. We did that at an early age. I was on Crenshaw and Slauson, I was on Bryanhurst, I was on 10th Avenue, them was my blocks. I had my whole hood on smash at a point in time. Everybody was, was getting their work from me. I kind of stepped away from that consciously because I seen what was going on. Dudes that I knew personally get football numbers that was my age, get hundreds and hundreds of years doing the same thing that I was doing. I, I, I told myself in my head, like the main thing I told myself was like, sometimes you gotta take two steps back to take 10 forward. I mean, I gotta fall back from having my jewelry, you know what I mean, having my everyday money, riding around the hood on leather and chrome, smoking weed all day, calling the homies up. You got that for me for sure, going to pick up 200 here, 500 here, 1,000 here, and that's my day. I had, to, I had to let go of that luxury, go back to being a young dude that was Pinching every penny, maybe had $20 a day to spend, 10 on a sack of weed, 10 to eat, just so I could stay creative and work. And it was it was hard for my ego. And I was used to being that young fly nigga, take my pick of whatever female I want, at all the all the parties, all the clubs, all the, the spotlight was on me. I did everything with my process, point A to point Z. I went out and, and, and made the relationships with the producers. I took the music into my house, imported it into Pro Tools, gritted the shit out, recorded myself, ran from the Pro Tools to the mic and back and forth, bounced it down, burnt it on CD, took it into the street, promoted myself, sold it myself, went to these meetings, articulated my vision to the label, signed the deal, put my first foot forward to the street with my mixtape series. This was all me. So if my engineer tell me, oh, we can't do that, I, I engineer my nigga, so you get out the seat, let me take care of that. Or if my team say, oh, that's not gonna, that's not gonna work. If you go to Queens or Manhattan or Brooklyn and you wanna go to every high school and surround their high schools and, and, and really do grassroots promotion, they end up, oh, that's not, gonna, that's not gonna connect. Well, you don't do it, then I do it, because I've done this and I know the effect it has. I ain't got to my millions in this industry yet. We still own them hundreds of thousands and we trying to get to that million, me as a, as, as a new artist coming in. So I'm, I'm used to this type of money because it's not to the point where it's rap money, a million dollars, two, three million, five million, and then Hollywood money, 10 million. It's not to that right now. It's to the 50,000s and 100,000s and 20,000s. So I understand the mentality behind that money. I understand that that's not money that changes your life. I understand that you don't go hit the club and spend five racks at night off of your advance. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't, I didn't did that with my street money and woke up the next day with no work and a gang of niggas calling my phone up and I'm missing all this money because I balled out last night and I, I hit the club crazy and I felt like I was that nigga for the one night as opposed to having a, a, a consistent progress. Also in the house, all money in, no money out, even less talk money. Um, these are all titles off my mixtape, you know what I'm saying? RSC to the day I die. I'm from Slauson. I got a lot of concepts and titles that revolve around the state of this violent world we live in. One second, I'm, 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 I have this standpoint. But then at the, on the next record, I might take a different standpoint and, and speak on this topic from the perspective of intelligence, of somebody that wants to change this problem, somebody that, that wants to resolve the conflict. Then I might speak on it from a position of somebody that's actively involved in this, hustling in the house. Then I might speak on it from somebody that feels trapped in this. So it's, it's a gang of different perspectives of how this state of reality is real and how it affects everybody. And that's kind of like the theme of Bullets Ain't Got No Names is, is the title of my series. Volume one, two, and three is all different spins off of that. Every song represents a different position that you can take on that on that topic as if it was a debate. <laughs>